All right, students, so let's talk about judgment. Judgment is when you evaluate a work of art and you do that with a criteria that you set, that you establish at the onset or at the beginning of the judgment. And a good judgment will have claims that are very well defended and those are defended with logical evidence that is based on what you actually observe in the artwork. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. You might talk about how realistic the artwork is, how true to life does the artist make the images, make the object inside the um, artwork. You might talk about the formal qualities that are used in the artwork. So that would be things like the elements in the principle. Do they, is it well composed? Is there an interesting, comp is there an interesting use of emphasis or variety or pattern or something along those lines? Um, you might think about how art should be emotional. And if you are strongly agree with that, then you talk about how well the artist creates a feeling of emotion uh, for the viewer or how well they communicate their own emotions. Uh, also consider the intention of the artist. Perhaps when you do a judgment, you say, you know, at the very beginning, because remember you're setting forth the criteria early on in your judgment, and you say this artwork was intended to do X, Y, and Z, and it does X and Y very well, and Z it still needs to work on. You might talk about how much the artwork makes its viewers think, if this is supposed to be perhaps a political piece or some kind of a moral issue that it wants to make its viewers consider, how well is it making its viewers do that? You might think about how much technical skill it takes to manipulate the media that they chose to use to achieve their uh, ends and how well they did that, or uh, consider just overall how well is the artwork communicating? Is it a clear message? Is it obvious what they want to say? Keeping some of these in mind, let's look at a judgment of the artwork we looked at last time. Adrian Van Utrecht creates a formally successful artwork with still life with bouquet and skull. He creates a great deal of variety by playing with the texture, as you can see in the soft velvety texture of the flowers compared to the hard, smooth surface of the skull. The vases behind the skull appear smooth and glossy or shiny, but in a way that is different from the golden goblet to the right of them. In the foreground, he further plays with texture by painting crumpled paper, metal coins, and pearls, all realistically and all with very different textures from one another. So if we look back at that whole thing, then you'll see that early on is established how it is being evaluated. So it's formally successful. So we know that we're using a formal criteria. That is criteria that's rooted in the elements of art and the principles of art. And then as I go on, I claim that there's a great deal of variety. And I talk about texture and how there's many different textures and I identify where they are different and how they are different. Now I could have gone on and talked about how there's a variety of colors and a variety of forms but at least in this small, brief judgment, I have a well-defended argument that it is successful because it does variety very well. So let's look at one more, but this time one that isn't quite so positive. Still Life with Bouquet and Skull by Adrian Van Utrecht is not, successful, is not a successful painting because it fails to be very emotional. Although the artwork is about death, it does not make the viewer feel much about death. The colors are all fairly neutral and everything is painted very realistically, which doesn't allow much emotion to enter. While the values in the artwork are fairly dramatic, they're not manipulated in a way that calls the viewer's attention to a feeling. Furthermore, because there are not any humans depicted, the viewers don't have anyone to empathize with. So considering the different criteria that you can use to judge an artwork, you can tell that this judgment is about emotions and how well the artwork communicates emotions or causes emotions in the viewer. You see that in the words, very emotional. But you also see it later on when he talks about how it doesn't feel like there's much about death. And then the author also goes in to connect his statement to what he observes. So there's the colors are all fairly neutral. Everything is painted very realistically. And then he says, well, that doesn't allow a lot of emotion to enter. So he's giving a reason based on what he observes as to why the emotion isn't there. He goes on, he talks about the values and how they don't allow it to have emotion. He also talks about how there's a lack of humans. Um, which is perhaps not the, as strong of a point, but it is based on what, you, what he observes, which is, well, no humans in the artwork. So hopefully this is helpful. Of course, you can use any of these right here uh, to evaluate a, or to judge an artwork. And if you have your own, then that's fine. Have your own, but make sure you state it at the beginning of your judgment, and then you support it with observations from the actual artwork itself.